Hey everybody, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a set of concrete steps. And I'll have the, the forming video and the finishing videos following this one in a set of series. So part one, this is part one. We'll have part two and part three. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can come back and be notified when I have those videos out. I'll also have the full training videos on how to do these steps like this in the Concrete Underground, which is uh, in the link below. That's my training academy, so you can check that out also. Those will be coming up in the month of November. So the, the first thing we do when we pour concrete steps is, you know, we ask for a pretty low slump concrete. This is probably about a four inch slump concrete. And slump means how wet or how dry the concrete is when the concrete driver mixes it up in his truck. So we like to keep the concrete fairly dry so it doesn't sag too much underneath the stairs or underneath the risers. Um, this, this set of steps is about eight feet wide. And as you can see, there's one, two, three, there's four step ups from the, what's gonna be in the parking lot here into that entryway, which goes into the building. So I did all the forming on this and I put the styrofoam in, I put the rebar in. So I, I did everything on this job. This I'm working, I'm actually a subcontractor. So I didn't do the design or the planning or anything like that. I just I had a set of blueprints I was going by and that's, that's exactly what I did. I formed everything right to those blueprints. So I wasn't actually in on the design or anything like that. So the, the key to pouring these steps, number one, is the low slump concrete and then, you know, getting the concrete in place, filling, filling up your stairs. And then as you'll see here in a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vibrate this and, you know, make sure I actually forgot to do something on these. So and I remembered right at the end. So make sure you watch the whole video to check that out. It's. It's kind of funny, you know, as long as I've been doing this, even sometimes I still forget to do things. So Darren's kind of shoveling the concrete down the chute. Luke's putting it in place. Smoothing it out. And if you can notice on those risers, I kind of 45 the bottom of them to make them, to, just to make it a little easier to, to pour. That way, you know, I want to match the bottom of that riser on the top step and then obviously the top of the form on the one below it. And I actually made it, I actually made that 45, where I cut that 45 on the bottom of the risers, that's about a quarter of an inch higher than the form, you know, the next step down. So these, these steps will have a slight pitch out so water won't sit on them when it rains. We'd like to have the same slump concrete on all the risers. So when we go to finish, you know, we go, we end up stripping these boards off to finish. You'll see that in the finishing video. Um, it, all the concrete's the same slump where the risers are. You know, we don't really need concrete this stiff to pour that patio back there, that entryway. Or we got a wheelchair ramp way over there to the right. You can kind of see those forms that slope down. Even on that wheelchair ramp, we don't need the concrete quite this stiff, so we're just putting the same slump concrete in front of all the risers. That way when we finish it, it'll make it a little bit easier. So the next thing I do, once we get the concrete in place, is you know I take my little DeWalt pencil vibrator, and I'm gonna vibrate that concrete really good. It's going to take out, that's going to take out most of the air pockets, you know, up against the forms, but there'll still be a few when we go to strip these forms off. But that takes care of a lot of work when it comes to finishing is, is vibrating that concrete. And you can see how it just wants to kind of sag down. That's just perfectly normal. There's not much you can do about it. You just have to, going to have to dig that concrete back out that's high and just throw it back up top. You want to see it. You want to see that when you vibrate the concrete, you want to see it come out below the riser that's above it. You know, and make sure everything's filled up really, really nice, and there's no air pockets anywhere. Even on those side forms, you know, those are 
you'll see when we strip those off, you know, you want those looking really, really nice when you finish, because some of it may end up being exposed like these. These will all be exposed after on the sides. That pencil vibrator makes it really, really easy. That thing is really light. And, uh, you know, I have that down in the link in the description. We use that thing all the time for vibrating around our forms. Much, much easier than carrying around a bigger one or even an electric one. And that's how we get the vibrating done right there. So once we get them poured and vibrated, the next step is to, you know, get your concrete roughed in. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm digging out that high and I'm going to get it roughed in pretty close to grade. We get quite a bit of saggage on this because I really vibrated them really, really good. It's, that's going to make the whole difference in the world when you go to start finishing them. So, I mean, just take your time. If, uh, if it's not 90 or 100 degrees out, you should have, you should have plenty of time to get these, get these magged in. You can see Darren and Luke out there over there starting to pour that concrete ramp. So I'll just, I'll just end up rough magging these steps myself getting them getting them in place while them guys do the ramp I decided to go get a shovel because there was quite a bit of quite a bit of saggage after I got done vibrating this thing just to speed things up a little bit there's definitely no hurry in when you do these you know you want to make sure you get them Get them magged really, really as close as possible the first time. And you can see how I've got that 45 under there I'm going by. I want to go right at the bottom of that 45 on those risers. As close to the bottom as I can. I definitely don't want to be low on it. If I'm a tiny bit high on it, that's okay. I'll fix that when I finish. But I want to match that, that form on the front, you know, the front riser. And get as close to it I can as the 45 on the back riser. That'll save me a lot of work later on. And I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm just roughing these in right now. I'm just magging them. I don't have to get them perfect. I know that I'm going to have time. i got to let the concrete set up afterwards. Let it harden up some before I try to really get it perfect. But the closer you can get them now at this stage, you know, the better off you are. Now I'm throwing some concrete on the ground there for a reason. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why later on in the video. But I'm not just throwing it on the ground to waste it. Now if I didn't have a 45 underneath those risers... I, and I don't need one, but it just makes the finishing go a little easier. If I didn't have that 45, I'd have the full inch and a half width of the 2 by to go by. But the, that just makes it a little harder to finish. You know, it, it, the inch and a half of that 2 by when you go strip it off, if that's dug into the concrete at all, if let's say you're an eighth high in the back and you have to fill that whole eighth of an inch deep by inch and a half wide, by the length of it, eight feet of it, that's a lot of work when it comes to finishing. So that's the reason we 45 that. We can get right under that as much as possible to start with. See how the process goes. It's not too bad. You know, as long as you're not, you're not in a big hurry, you can get them looking pretty good on this first rough float. So that's how I get that's how I get the first rough float man. And as you can see, this is what I forgot to do when I before I started nagging him. I forgot to put that, that rebar in the nose and that's what it called for on the set of plans. So I mean really I could have set that in first before I got this all nice and mag mag floated out, but I forgot. The guys reminded me after that rebar was sitting right there on that pillar. 
So we'll just stick it in now. It's a good thing. It's a good thing we remembered while the concrete was still pretty green. Get it in place, and then we're gonna just push it down a couple inches. We want it about two inches below the surface, and about you know two inches away from the form. And that's just to help reinforce the nose of those stairs. So I really, I mean, I had to go back and remag everything again. Um, but hey, I guess I could just chalk it up to old age, right? <laughs> so once I got it pushed down in place, I, I'll just get it magged back out. It'll only, it'll only take a few minutes. Yep. Having that, pushing that rebar in there means I probably have to dig out just a little extra concrete here and there. But it wasn't too bad. You can see Darren and Luke have already, they're getting started on pouring that entryway up top. So I really haven't helped them guys that much <laughs> today. So I'm just going to continue to to mag out, remag out those those steps while them guys start pouring that entryway. They got the ramp all done already. And that's basically how we pour a set of concrete steps. I mean, it's just you get them poured out. Nice. If your slump is good, it makes the whole process a lot easier. So get them poured out, get them vibrated, and then the forming comes into play. You know, if you did a good job forming them, then, then getting them magged out like I'm doing right now is going to be fairly easy. And then it's a matter of just waiting for them to set up a little bit so you can finish. So again, if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see how we form these, how we finish these, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. This is us starting to finish them. So this will be one of the next videos you'll be able to see if you're a subscriber. So make sure you come on back and we'll show you how we how we strip the forms, how we finish these, how we rub the faces out with a sponge. That'll all be coming up, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on the next one.